On day 39 of week 25, students will begin learning how to analyze data. Students will analyze graphs using a strategy called I squared. The two I's in I squared stand for identify and interpret. Identify means what I see, what is literally and obviously in the graph. This can include things like number of lines, colors, intervals, slope, anything else that is readily apparent. Interpret refers to what it means. In other words, what is signified by the lines, color, slope, and other features that were observed. After writing comments for both eyes, students then write a caption for the graph in paragraph form that incorporates what they've already written. Let's look at this in action using the example provided. In this experiment, Mary and Jose wanted to find out which container would keep a quantity of milk the coldest over a five hour period if the milk is left out at room temperature of 77 degrees Fahrenheit. They used four different containers, the original carton the milk came in, which is their control group, a plastic jug, an insulated milk box, and a vacuum stainless steel carafe. Here, the independent variable is the type of container the milk is in, while the dependent variable is the temperature of the milk over time. Taking a look at the data table, we can see that after five hours, the control was the warmest at 67 degrees Fahrenheit, the milk box was next warmest at 65.1 degrees, followed by the plastic jug at 55.6 degrees, and the vacuum sealed carafe at 48 degrees. A more efficient and impactful way of analyzing the data is by using a graph. The independent variable type of container is represented by the color-coded lines, while the x-axis shows time and the y-axis shows the dependent variable of temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. The key at the top of the graph tells us which line is which. Like the data table, the graph allows us to see immediately that the container did indeed have a significant effect on the end temperature of the milk. However, the graph provides this information in a way that is more easily digestible and also shows other interesting patterns more clearly, such as how the insulated box was little better than the control and how the carafe kept the milk at its initial temperature for a full hour before it rose at all. Although this information is also available in the data table, to see it there requires more hunting through the numbers. In this graph, it's readily apparent. Let's apply the I squared strategy to this graph just as a student might. First, what can we identify? What changes, patterns, or trends can we see? Students might first identify that there are four different colored lines and they're all going up. That is to say, they have a positive slope. We can also see that the lines have a different slope and ultimately end at different heights. We can identify that the X axis represents time while the y-axis represents temperature in Fahrenheit, and we can see that the red and blue lines have a higher slope at the beginning than at the end, while the yellow and green lines have a more constant slope. Second, let's interpret. What does it mean? We're not yet trying to explain the entire graph, but rather just to interpret each of the statements we made in the identify stage. For instance, what does it mean that there are four different colored lines? Well, each color represents each container, or each manipulation of the independent variable. Although this might seem trivially true, Remember that many of our students might be learning these data literacy skills for the very first time. The meaning of the line colors is actually a key part of understanding what the graph is showing. More complex interpretation concerns what it means that all of the lines are going up. What does it mean that they have a positive slope? This means that the temperature of the milk in all the containers is rising over time. None of the containers keeps the temperature totally constant or lowers it. The most any container can do is slow down the process of heating up. Finally, step three is caption. Start with a topic sentence that describes what the graph shows, then build a coherent paragraph of what we've already written. So a student might say, this graph shows the change in temperature over time of milk kept in four different containers. Although the milk in all four containers increased in temperature, the milk carton and box allowed the temperature to rise the most, the plastic jug kept the temperature of milk cooler, while the carafe kept the milk the coldest over the given time of five hours. After going through this example together, students will need to make a graph of their own experiment, then apply the I-squared method to interpret their own data. Students will insert their graph on page five of the student handout. You can see where it says double click on the graph to change it, double click, and it will open up a Google drawing panel. Students can zoom in so that it fills up the whole screen, and you can see there's some text boxes here to change the names of the dependent and independent variables as well as actually draw the graph. Now, if students are using this, they might be careful and add little tick marks to each line and label their intervals. Um, if that is too difficult for students, then they can also draw a general trend line, which is what I will be doing here. My experiment was about putting different numbers of freezing cold coins that I had put in the freezer into different cups of water. 
Now, based on my data, I had a control cup that I did not put any coins in. I had a cup that I put one coin in, a cup that I put five coins in, and a cup that I put 10 coins in. Based on my data, this is more or less what my graph would look like. The control cup changed very little. The one coin cup changed a little bit more than that, and so on. So you can see by looking at my data and drawing my lines freehand but carefully using the scribble tool and then color coding them, I can make a graph that's still readily interpretable. This shows overall patterns and trends. All of the cups showed an initial decrease in water temperature, and the ones with the coins showed an eventual slight increase towards the end. Some students might be savvy using spreadsheet software like Google Sheets, in which case they can type in their data into the spreadsheet and then create a graph by selecting all of the data, going to Insert, and then Chart. This is for Google Sheets specifically. If they're using Excel or Numbers, there might be some other buttons. Um, you can see that Google Sheets is savvy enough to already make me a line chart or line graph because it's sensing a change over time. And it even uh, correctly labels my axes and my lines. It creates a key. There's plenty of other options. If I want, I can try to change it to a bar graph, but obviously that doesn't look right because these are this is change over time, not discrete categories. So as you can see, there's plenty of options here for me. Um, I can also go and into Customize, and then I can change the intervals on each axis. I definitely want to add a name onto the Y axis and change the title as well. To then place my uh, digital graph into the student handout, I scroll down to page five. Then I'm going to double click again as before on the model graph that's there and now i'll just copy and paste the chart i'm going to not link it i can just cover up what's already there and i'm done one last thing might be that you're wondering how students will know to make a bar graph or a line graph uh, a bar graph is typically used for discrete categories so when we're counting the number of different things or an amount of a certain thing Here's an example graph I made earlier this school year with my students when I asked them what their favorite season is. So each season is its own discrete category and I counted the number of students who voted for each season. For a line graph, on the other hand, a line graph is going to show a change over time. It can also show a continuous relationship between variables like maybe height and age, um, although that might be better for a scatter plot. So here's the line graph from the example. We're showing how the temperature of the milk changes over time. Most students will be using a line graph as they're measuring changes in temperature over time. So those are the main points for day 39, when students will be using the I-squared strategy to analyze a graph and then do the same for their own experimental data.